everyone, welcome to another episode of the Loudwire Podcast. I am Graham. And I'm Joe. And we've got William Duvall of Allison Chains and Ben Weinman of the Dillinger Escape Plan in the studio today. Uh, both in the new band, Giraffe Tongue Orchestra, uh, the new album, Broken Lines, September 23rd. Now, I- I'm such a huge fan of both of these guys, so actually having them in is like an honor for me, and I've never met either of these dudes before. So just to be able to talk with them, I- I'm super happy about. We're going to be doing uh, Rock vs. Writer, and today's topic is going to be the term supergroup. Is it overused? Should it be used at all? Uh, they'll take a side. Joe will take a side. We'll see what happens there. It's the Loudwire Podcast. Strap in. And strap on. All right, hey everyone, Loudwire Podcast, and today our guests from Giraffe Tongue Orchestra, William Duvall and Ben Weinman. Thank you guys so much. Such a big fan of both of you. Uh, so, thank you again. <laughs> uh, so, the new band, Giraffe Tongue Orchestra. Uh, one thing I'm really interested in learning about is uh, your two roles in the band, because coming from... Allison Chains, William, it's uh, Jerry Cantrell, of course, the driving creative force behind that, although I do love Phantom Limb, which you have a songwriting credit on. And then, Ben, you've been the main creative force of Dillinger Escape Plan for like two decades. So when it comes to this band, how did you find yourself settling into your, I guess, creative duties? I mean, I mean, I've I've been the, the driving force of every band I've been in except Alice, so it's a natural role for me. And Um, you know, with, with something like this, where you've got, um, you know, sort of two people who are used to occupying these positions, but, but have very distinct, um, you know, sort of separation of powers, I guess, if we could say it like that, you know, like, like there's, there's division of labor here. That's, that's so clear cut as to make it really easy and really harmonious and, and, like when they sent me the music when, you know, that, that they, they had been working on Brent and Ben, um, with Thomas and Pete, it was, it was like, um, my, my, one of my, my challenges was to not change anything that they'd sent, not try to rearrange anything, not try to, you know, so you can take this and redo it like three times instead of four or five times, you know, and then, and just to do what was there, but within those parameters have complete, sort of dominion over what what's going to be said you know and so it worked out really well man like i didn't ask them to change a thing they didn't ask me to change a thing and here we are you know so you'd say really the biggest thing is not infringing on each other's respective roles yeah i mean as much as possible just let 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 people be who they are you know that's why we're here that's why we came together Mm -hmm. you know yeah i mean that was the, the thing i was most impressed with is that you really took a body of work that was completed musically and made it work uh, with, you know, it was enjoyable to get all of that hard work back with a new level of creation on top of it, which brought, glued it all together in a way that I hadn't necessarily even envisioned it. So that's really nice. Um, I think as William says, we kind of occupy different spaces of expertise or mm-hmm. s- not expertise, but you know, we do our things, you know. We you know what each we person do, does Yeah, best. we do our things and we do it well. So um, so that works out well. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so this band, I mean, you've got members of Dillinger Escape Plan, Alice in Chains, Mastodon, the Mars Volta. On paper, it sounds like this could be the weirdest band that's ever existed. <laughs> like, when it comes to the music that you guys could potentially produce. But, again, you guys went... Uh, smooth and soulful and, and nice and uh, you know what do you think the reaction is going to be and uh, is what you accomplished what you really set out to do or was there any expectation? Well, I think we all took ourselves out of our comfort zones in a way you know what I mean yeah. so it's like uh, you know comparatively to a Dillinger record you may consider it smooth or like, you know, less dense. And, and compared to an Alice in Chains record, there's a lot of acrobats, acrobatics sure. going on musically that he wouldn't normally be singing over in, in Alice in Chains. And um, I think that's the beauty of it. It's uh, where all of that meets in the middle 
that creates something completely different than any of our bands. Uh, yeah. And that's that was the goal. That's the goal of any project right. that you're doing outside of your uh, something you've already done is to learn from each other, push each other in different directions and create something original that also respects each, per each person's style. Yeah. And then yeah, in essence, the answer to your question were the goals accomplished absolutely and um you know, uh the the first bit of your question, remind me what that was again. You you had a you had a Oh, it was that basically this could have been the weirdest band possible. Do you think fans are going to be surprised? What's the reaction been is what you asked. And, and yeah. the reaction so far has been fantastic. Great. Fantastic. And we're just so, so happy about it. Great. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, Alice in Chains did a, a gigantic opening slot with Guns N' Roses earlier this year. Uh, I mean, basically the tour of the century, mm -hmm. and you guys got to open. Can you tell me what that experience was like, and what what was that crowd like? Because I feel like that's probably going to be the most impassioned group of people that you can possibly play music for. It was it was really good. I mean, big audiences are nothing new to us. Um, you know, we've done a lot of festivals and we've done stadiums and stuff before, but. This was special because of, of who it was we were playing with and the, the whole sense of event around it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's rare, especially in, in this country, that an American rock band can create this kind of fervor and do that kind of business, um, you know, where the rock show becomes almost like the sporting event, you know, like it's it's like every like every night those guys are, are playing the Super Bowl, essentially. And so that's amazing. So to be, it's an honor just to be, be a part of something like that at that scale and for this reason. And then of course, you know, beyond all that, we're fans of the band and we're friends with those guys, you know, Duff and Slash for sure. And, and so it was, it was really cool and uh, just glad it worked out. It was a total spectacle like you would expect. And, um, you know, the fans were great. I mean, you know, it, it it's not like, um, you know, going out and playing in front of a crowd of, I don't know, like, say, Slayer fans, you know, that I, I know are very sort of, you know, they only want their Slayer, you know what I mean? Uh, yes, yes, that's and true. And yeah. that's it, right? And any opener on, on a Slayer thing has... has often, maybe not always, but often yeah, had, a, had a very... <laughs> they've often had a hard time. Guns N' Roses, this is like a nice evening out for any rock fan. Guns N' Roses, Alice in Chains, completely makes sense as a bill. People came out, they had a good time. You know, some of these folks, it's going to be their one night out all year. You know what I mean? Some of these folks have been waiting. I think you were you were describing, like, you, you took your mom to see it. Yeah, I saw them over the <laughs> right? weekend at MetLife. Yeah. I took my mom. and yeah. Like you said, like a sporting event. I mean, people yeah. were tailgating for hours yeah. yeah and i feel like they captured a moment in time that's been lost in, at least yeah. in america like right. you were saying it's right. headliner opener stadium i never got to experience this kind right. of huge phenomenon right. sensation it's yeah. like you know you're dying to see this band just mm -hmm. like they were mm -hmm. in you know 1989 you don't really know who these guys are and it's just like the electricity just couldn't have been higher yeah it's awesome and so, and it's it's like uh and it it's increasingly rare as i said and and, and um like it's increasingly rare all over the world, but yeah, in America, it's kind of unheard of, you know? So I'm just really glad we got to do it. Now you replaced obviously a huge singer and icon and Lane Staley when you mm -hmm. joined Alice in Chains and Axl Rose has, uh, at least for the time being, replaced Brian Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, now having opened for Guns N' Roses recently and everything and, you know, seeing Axl perform, mm -hmm. obviously more than capable of the job, but, mm -hmm. um, what can you speak to what it's like um, for replacing such an iconic singer like that and now too for, an, for a band like ACDC and what Axel's doing? Well, I, you know, obviously related to a lot of what he was going through, um, particularly before anybody had even heard anything. The court of public opinion was very loud and resounding in, in, in their judgments. Very divisive. Free judgments. And then he actually did his first shows and people started seeing things on YouTube or whatever on videos and and most of them had to eat their words and and and, and I was happy to see that a lot of the people were willing to 
say so in public like i was wrong you know what i mean yeah. like that was you don't get that a lot <laughs> it was it was i mean to to i'm talking about axel now i mean you know and and acdc and he and i were joking about it because it's like it's like i was like yeah man it was really cool to see you like shut all these people up you know mm -hmm. it was really nice you know and i know a tiny bit about that but i mean you know it, it it's it's cool man i mean look it's at the end of the day it's it's bands are just these like i've said before they're just these fragile organisms and you know i can understand to some degree i understand both sides of of a position on a particular band but but when you get something that just works it works and when you look at somebody like axel it works i mean it just does to me i get it it's not brian johnson but it you know and it and it's and neither one of them are bon scott mm -hmm. but in terms of vocal range and stuff and in terms of like attitude like there are not many more like people who can conjure the the pissed off quality that axel rose can man no <laughs> you know what i mean he's working some stuff out mm-hmm in those songs right that G Absolutely. we all know in gnr and mm. so it's only natural that when he's going to get to be in like his favorite band acdc he's That's gonna cool, yeah. he's not gonna mess around he knows what the chatter is gonna be and he's gonna do everything in his power to shut everybody the fuck up <laughs> and so i just dug it from that perspective again from my own personal experience it's very much a, a similar thing it's like well you can say what you want man but I'm coming at you, mm -hmm. period. End of story, you know? And I'll do it every night. And there's going to be no stopping me, period. So it's like, I get it, you know? And I, 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 liked, I liked seeing him walk that gauntlet and do it so well. It was awesome. Yeah, he really took it in stride, and he, he did not care. He's, he's like, I'm awesome. singing in my favorite band, and I know Dude. I can kill this. Well, not to mention, he's only got GNR to go back to. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's a you pretty know? good fallback plan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doing the biggest tour of the last, like, 25 years. Right. It's like, yeah, you know what? No, day job's not so bad. You know? <laughs> mm. My like, fallback's going back to being an elementary school janitor. So. <laughs> That's true. That's what he did before this. <laughs> elementary school janitor. They all need a metalhead janitor. <laughs> or is that two? All right, and it's time for Rocker versus Writer. And we're here with Ben Wyman and William Duvall of Giraffe Tongue Orchestra. Some call them a super group. Some people think the term's overused. We're going to see what they think. They're going to be taking the side of that the super group is an overused term. And as the writer who uses the word super group pretty frequently, I'm going to be defending it here. It's a compliment, really. Right. But the only thing bad about it is that it creates expectations. Mm. Um, hmm. You know, and, and the truth is, is any like super group or that you know outside you know a new project outside of what people are known for that would make someone a super a part of a super group if people are known from being from another project the reality is is that it's, it's a baby band right. <laughs> yeah you're you know starting what i mean over. like you're starting we're all starting respects. from scratch mm -hmm. here we don't know we're struggling mm -hmm. we're trying to make it work we're trying to figure out logistics mm -hmm. you know we're all trying to practice and learn our songs and and we all and know what people are going to think we have no idea mm -hmm. if anyone likes it we have no idea it's just like a starting a new band that that's what it is but it happens to be with people who are seasoned and have been doing this a long time so you know to some super group to me baby band you know? yeah <laughs> and also as you pointed out too it's just people who are in your orbit who you naturally run across you know you, you've maybe admired their work but you're also kind of friends and you've you know you've seen each other over the years and so it's not like oh super you know you're not looking across the table from one another going you're super you're super no yeah. you're super <laughs> you know what i mean it's like it's just you know these are these cats you dig and you, you can go to guitar to center and get a, find you know? the dude noodling to get the guitar player or you can call up brent hines who you talk to right. the day before <laughs> anyway yeah you know what i mean it's like you know, it's really just a it's matter a natural of thing the natural and in this day and age with technology you're not when you're putting a band together you're not thinking of who's in like your friend from high school oh you're gonna be a singer you play bass because you're a bad guitar player you know what i mean you're like mm -hmm. you can be like who would i really want to play with wherever they are because mm -hmm. you can send files you can like you know 
hang out and whatever. So now, from the fan perspective, like because you know we use the term super group yeah. one. Uh, there's so many of them now, and like you said, yeah. technology's made it easier trading files back and forth. You don't have to get in the same room and jam anymore. Yeah. But for us, or I mean, at least me personally, yeah. the most interesting thing is taking what I really like, say about your guitar playing, your singing, and from your respective band, but seeing how that translates in something else, because mm. sometimes you guys are really only good at being in, you know, most, one band. Most people are. And yeah, most super do, groups are, you know, people say this all the time and they're right. Usually the, uh, you know, the parts of the, yeah, the sum, sum is not, not equal to the, equal to, to the parts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, uh, the most part, but I think that's not because people aren't good at what they do or they want to, it's because, um, you know, sometimes, do you think it's the it, expectations it, that you talked about? Sometimes it's expectations, but also sometimes it's like the time and logistics people have to get this stuff done. They kind of get in a room and, and they don't know if they work well. They, they don't know if there's chemistry. They don't know any of that. They just mm-hmm. know they like the person. They like each other's bands. And that's the problem with supergroups is you're going based off that, not just having a natural chemistry of hanging out, growing up together, coming from the same place necessarily. But with this group, uh, uh, whether someone thinks it's good or not, the difference is is that – We've been working on this for years and we cycled through people and some of them didn't work out and some of them were my favorite people in the world and they're still great, but just didn't mesh. And mm-hmm. we did not let this thing happen until it felt right. There were, the goal was to make a great record and to, to enjoy something outside of our comfort zone of what we were doing, not necessarily just to make a group in the time span we were off. And that's typically what super groups are. Mm-hmm. Right. So I guess, you know, I, I feel like there is a difference in approach maybe. And the thing with Supergroup is that it generally always has a positive connotation. Um, nobody's going to say Supergroup like, oh, I bet it sucks. Like, I don't know, it's, man. It's, Have you always, heard I bet it's fun? awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the thing about it is it, 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 it does just inherently the word Supergroup has a positive connotation. But the overuse of it, and as you guys were saying, like for your you know generation, it's, it's, it's become a thing that's it, it's just it's just so pervasive now and i guess that's um due to many factors i mean not least of which is is the 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 economics of the industry now as well as the 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 file sharing aspect so in 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 some ways it's easier to transfer information back and forth in order to get some collaborative thing going and to get a piece of work done and it's also on the sort of downside for lack of a better way of putting it, it there's there's a need more than ever for for guys and bands to diversify their their portfolios mm-hmm. right i mean not everybody gets to you know make a, a a really decent living doing this and it's getting harder and harder to do it and so it becomes more and more about just like well you know Keeping am i fun. having fun and 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 you know, oh, maybe I'd like to do something with this guy. We're friends. We've drank, we've hung out backstage and drunk beers together. Let's try to make a band, you know. Mm-hmm. And and uh, you know, it, it creates one more opportunity to maybe go out there and tour a little bit or something like that. And and it just so it, there's an economic component to probably why it's happening so much as well. Um, and again, with us, I mean, luckily we fall outside of a lot of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like. Yeah, we, and, it, and it's interesting you said this. that. I never even thought about this, but like there is an e- e- economic incentive because for a supergroup because typically band guys will get together and think, well, the collective people in here, we're going to get a huge record deal. It's proven. This guy was in a huge band. This guy mm-hmm. did this. This guy did this. We're putting this out on our own. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. it's like that's not the yeah, we are our hands are on this everything. You know, like right videos, everything like artwork. This you complete know, passion hands project. are in it. To, from you know it's this is not some kind of big money grab you know right. this is really something we want to have do our way you know, because of maybe exactly. all the experience we have and and there's the not things, a lot of cooks in the kitchen yeah we yeah, wanted like, to do this differently than maybe we've done in the past mm-hmm. or maybe some of the things we learned that worked we wanted to implement them and that's an opportunity mm-hmm. yeah uh, did you guys ever see the show Supergroup on VH1 
Yes. Was that, that, that was with uh, Evan Seinfeld. <laughs> oh, my Ted God. Nugent, and Ted Nugent, yeah. Scott Ian, well, and Jason Bonham. And, and, and Sebastian, Sebastian Bach. 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 My Savage God. Animal. If that, show, <laughs> if that show did not kill the, the name wow. Super Crew yeah, you're right. forever. That As really you're saying, the sum of all, all the parts did not work. That right. was really just embarrassing. <laughs> wow. It really was embarrassing. That was a car crash, but I'm glad they filmed it. Although we could have a reality show. That's Dude, we could. We, we Brent we Hines could. reality yeah, show. Yeah, him on his own. I'm really. for that. Yeah. I've pretty much been doing Facebook Live things, <laughs> you know, yeah. just because. Because he's around. Just yeah. everything. Now we got Thomas Pridgen over at the studio, and I'm sure it's gonna be a laugh a minute. It's it's craziness. <laughs> oh. Now, um, you said really working out of your comfort zone, um, in the group. Do you yeah. think anything with uh, the increased accessibility to so much music has diversified tastes, made people more eclectic, and that's why we're seeing so many more, I guess, quote unquote, super groups, is that people want to now delve into Maybe. these things because they, yeah, it's like so it. readily available. I mean, I think the problem is, well, the, I guess the advantage of a super group is that people kind of can identify it based on the sum of the people who have maybe been r rose above the noise. Mm -hmm. You know, because right now there's so much out there. Uh, there's no kind of quality control. Back in the day, I was always mad as a young music fan that we had to listen to what was given to us by the major labels. And that sure. was it. We didn't know. You know, we didn't know. And luckily, in some of those, you know, I was coming up through high school, it was bands like Alice in Chains and Soundgarden. They were good bands, you know. <laughs> but um, there was this kind of, like, club of you had to really dive and do the work to find other things. And I did. And that's how I got into underground punk and metal and stuff like that uh but now it's almost the opposite like there's no gatekeeper and there's no quality control and there's so much noise that word noise but it really is there's so much sensory overload that nobody knows what's good what's bad everything's on playlists so most kids don't know what a band is they just know the song it's like song after song after song mm -hmm. in a genre that's been recommended because you like this song they don't know who it is they don't know the name they're like i just like that song that song and that song so if a super group is one more opportunity for it to be like, oh, that's the band with that guy and that guy and that guy, mm -hmm. <laughs> at least it's some right. kind of like starting point of like, okay, at least I know they know what they're doing. Don't know if I like it, but I'm going to yeah. check it out. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And I think using the term super group too could initially pull in a lot of people. They see the word mm -hmm. super group and mm -hmm. they automatically go, oh, I got to see who's in this. I hate um, it. Totally. <laughs> 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 but yeah, one weird thing about uh, supergroups, a lot of people do tend to dislike the term, and that's mm -hmm. kind of uh, unique to music because in, like, say, the comic book world, yeah. people love the stuff. I was because thinking about like, it, like, the, the, you know. Yeah, the you got superer, the, the better. better. You yeah. got the Avengers, the Justice <laughs> Avengers, League, right. the Super Friends, yeah. and everyone like that. Everyone goes nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I I guess the problem is, is not the word, it's the fact that so many of them suck. <laughs> so many of the super. So if you don't want to like be associated with supergroups, it's because like a lot of them blow, you know. So yeah, but the word has no problem. You know, would you be? Would you prefer that the word be applied after people listen to the album and they go like, "Wow, yeah, that this really gets did the sound supergroup group stamp yeah. of approval." Yeah. That's <laughs> like, No, no, I just don't think it should automatically. Uh, no, I don't think. It, I think it's not a good or a bad term, but unfortunately, more have been not a success. So that's true. Uh, yeah. I guess you automatically have an association with negativity when you hear that word the mm -hmm. word in itself doesn't mean anything bad to me mm -hmm. um, yeah. but like you know you think of sebastian bach and evan seinfeld <laughs> and like <laughs> the son of bonham or something yeah. like jason bonham. Jason they knew bonham what they were doing when they made all those phone doing calls. drugs and out <laughs> oh dude <laughs> trying do you to make a song together do you remember the band name what oh dude <laughs> please tell me it was horrible it was damn democracy that's right. Oh. Democracy. So, oh. yeah, a lot of people, when they think super they, group, never they, work. Think, they think democracy. Democracies never work. <laughs> no, <laughs> they don't think cream. They think that's democracy. Un, yeah, that's cream. unfortunate. That's, yeah, that's a super group. There you yeah. go. That's, that's a legit yeah. super group. And, I mean, that was, that, was, that, was the, that was the first coining of the term, I believe, too. Was, I think you're right, yeah. It was yeah. cream. I think about, so. like, Blind Faith, too. I love that band. Blind Faith was the sort of apex of it, I guess. Um for then, but yeah, Cream was dubbed a super group. That was the first mm -hmm. term that I, the first usage I recall. Yeah, I think the moral of the story is, if you want to 
do a super group, get Eric Clapton in your band. Or he'll do it. Or get or get or get or get or get the or get Eric Clapton in your band. Or get the or get the you know the Clapton page you know of today. Oh God, yes. Brent Hines and Brent Hines and you know the Clap. I don't even. God, what that guy must have going on down there. Oh come on, this day and age. Come on, you can eat eat. We've all got stuff. everything, don't we? Come on. Just me? No. Brent Hines is a pirate, man. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. He, he can eat cancer and shit it out. Yeah, <laughs> done. He's, he's the greatest. He's just... Yeah. <laughs> Super. <laughs> don't worry about it. You could, like, take his blood and it'll, like, it's like the X-Men. You can cure you of everything. Yeah, it's going to be him and cockroaches, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> he's been through it all. That would be the reality TV show is Brent Hines in a post-apocalyptic wasteland oh. by himself. Oh wow! <laughs> oh please! There All it right. is. I don't know if that work out. That's. I guess. I. I am now hoping for a Trump presidency. Now that I can, <laughs> so, I can, so we can have that yeah. show. <laughs> I was in a cab yesterday, and literally the guy said he wanted Kanye West to be the vice president, and Trump why, to be the why president. Not? Why not? And th- at this point, why not? might as well. <laughs> might as why well. not? Uh, all right, I want to thank you guys for this episode of Rocker vs. Writer. Uh, everybody listening, let us know what you think in the comment section below. One thing I would love to talk about is the Irony is a Dead Scene EP because it's yeah. one of my favorite pieces of music ever. And I remember first hearing it, the first time I heard it, it must have been in 2003 when I was in high school. I was 15 oh years old and I basically at that time only listened to pop punk. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I was in music class at the computer, and yeah. there somebody had burned it onto the computer. That's crazy. And I saw the Dillinger Escape Plan. I'm like, oh, that's kind of a cool name because yeah. I'm into true crime and stuff like that. Oh. So I hear it. And, of course, the first song I put on is When Good Dogs Do Bad Things. So so immediately, yeah. I'm the best you'll ever. Dun, dun, dun. Harvey, Harvey, yeah. Harvey, Harvey. And I'm right. like, ah! What like All right. like what the what is this? And I like turned it off and it like disturbed me. Yeah. It disturbed but then uh, it became like my favorite thing in the world, you know. That's <laughs> usually the super fans that we have are the ones that really did not like it at first and felt compelled to give it another try and another yeah. try. So um and then there's the girls who say my boyfriend likes your band. Oh, from from that it must be Patton. It must my be girl, Patton's no, voice. My girlfriend <laughs> the, no, there's the girlfriends that say my boyfriend likes your band. Oh, okay. Yeah, a lot of those. There's the, the, there's the guys that like our bands, and the girlfriends are saying well, their boyfriends like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to know, um, are there any distinct memories of, of recording that with a guy like Mike Patton or like the, the few shows that you actually did get mm. to play with him? Yeah, you know, it was really, I guess, it for one, it was just an honor that he respected us and liked our music because he's very critical, as very. people know. Um, but once you're in, you're in type of thing. And, uh, he doesn't care, obviously, if you're successful or if you've, been, if you're a massive band or if you're playing some punk show in a basement, he likes what he likes. Um, so that was number one. It really made me feel like maybe I'm doing something okay. If someone like that thinks it's cool, you know, maybe I should keep doing this, you know? Yeah. Um, but I will say, I remember, obviously he has amazing stories about Faith No More. Oh, he had God. amazing stories about being on tour with Guns N' Roses. Yeah. Um, wow. And that I enjoyed a lot because he was with them in the heyday, you know, yeah. of that, like Metallica, Faith No More, Guns N' Roses. Yeah. Think totally. about a monster tour. Yeah. Um, and um, and I, I do remember saying to myself, well, I'm not going to hold back. This has to be the record I want it to be. I don't care who it is. It's either going to be, you know, I, I'll probably never talk to the guy again ever, anyway. So <laughs> this is my chance to make a record with my favorite singer in the world from when I was a kid. Like, the greatest, so yeah. I was hard on him. And I expected, really? for, yeah, I was very hard on him, you know? So um, when he, uh, when it was over, I thought he was going to be like, who do you think you are? And he was like, this was one of the best experiences I've had. You know exactly what you want. You know, I don't, you know, you know most of the people I work with, they just have no idea what they're doing. You were very, you knew what you needed. You knew what you want. We had a great time. This is, we got to do this again. This is awesome. So I think we bonded a friendship and uh, I still consider him like a mentor really because... I think he he's always done it his own way, really, and um, and figured it out without compromising. So, yeah. uh, William, did you see Ben's appearance on the godlike metal talk show Two Minutes to Late Night? 
<laughs> because no, I, I swear that's that is probably one of the greatest things that mm. not enough people have seen. Okay, I'll is make on the two minutes the, to late night. Minutes. It was the uh, pilot. It was the first the we kind of you know, Dude, first time that thing ever existed. It so. was so it was so excellent. I really yeah. hope they end up making uh, more of those. And you really went into a, a a pop girl band's practice space. Uh-huh. Uh, I've heard about you this. heard oh you heard about this <laughs> yeah auditioning as their new guitarist yeah. and just started it was like okay you know I think I can jam to this and just started playing like Dillinger riffs and yeah you told me about great. this but I haven't actually yeah, seen it it was fun what can you tell me ketchup. about that uh, being in that room with those chicks um I, I you know I was nervous actually <laughs> <laughs> you know I was totally nervous because they were totally judging me and like then and, and oh. uh like yeah, but um it was fun, you know. I don't know. It was great. It was yeah. pretty cool. But it was like, if I didn't get it, I'm okay. Like mm. Axel, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's cool because I wasn't trying to get you know audition for my like. No, not. And it's but, cool because like if you try to explain what you do in Dillinger, yeah. they're never gonna get it. Right. So might as well just have well, fun now they and keep, jokes okay, on now them. Now they keep texting me asking me to like come on stage with them and play. Really? Them. I'm like. I'm like, I, no, I'm busy. Oh, man. What's, <laughs> but, what's, what's their band name? Let's give them a plug at least. Do you remember? Um, Celeste and the something. Whatever. Celeste, it's screw name is, Yeah. If you were to name it, what would you name it? <laughs> I asked what if it you? could be like the Ben. Celeste and, and the Ben. Celeste and the Ben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Celeste and the yeah. They're like, but, um, uh, you just stepped in the room, dude. <laughs> yeah, but they were cool. I mean, like, it was interesting because they had this, uh, like, drummer from, like, she's from like Colombia who just oh. came here and like again just answered the ad and she was shredding and she's like a star in Colombia she's on TV and she's like all really these, mm. you know Damn. And, and then she, she just wanted to come to America to learn drums like and she was just in that room jamming with them they had only played like two times and none of those girls it was like a crazy and none of those girls they all met from like want ads and stuff you know like yeah hmm. sure and they were doing doing it so and they were all not from new york they all came to make it you know to the big city and oh they made so. it on two minutes to late night that's right <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was excellent yeah. all right uh last one for you guys uh we put out a list recently of uh bands in our opinion who we thought have never made a bad album and both alice and chains and dillinger escape plan and oh, mastodon, mastodon. We're all on that list. Cool. So, um, Sounds coming. Sounds like a super group. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a we super group needs that. to have. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, coming from you guys, who do you think is like an essential band, in your opinion, that's really just never made a bad album? Wow. Well, I'd say you You can't really mess with the, uh, the Zeppelin catalog. It's pretty hard to fuck with. Yeah. Um, I think. Uh, you know, again, Hendrix, that's pretty hard to mess oh, with. Oh, I love, he, you know, I love Hendrix. He didn't have that long, but what time no. he did have, he really maximized it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, gosh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I mean, the, you know, Sabbath has a, a lot of good records. I mean, like, it's, it's an extraordinary amount of records. I mean, I can't speak to sure. the entire yeah. catalog, but. There's a couple to get To but. get, to get, like, to get six or seven in a row yeah the yeah. first six like it's like it's like okay that's and and especially living how they were living and oh putting my. out you know one or two albums a year yeah. it's pretty remarkable yeah, cocaine yeah <laughs> definitely <laughs> definitely especially you know volume, volume four. four on yeah oh yes <laughs> yeah. absolutely that's but, probably my favorite personally you know, and then four. and then bowie is hard to fuck with honestly and yeah. Prince is hard to mm. fuck with. I mean, oh, yeah. how do you define a bad record for those guys? Like it, yeah. they went so out of like, so out of their comfort zone right. and yeah. reinvention. It's yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, they were just they they put they put they put their work before everything else, and you really you really see it. You really see it. You feel it. <laughs> what about you, Ben? Um, I would well the Beatles. Sure. Oh, hey, I mean, what are you doing? <laughs> let's right? just be obvious. Or, um, I mean, I enjoyed every Nine Inch Nails record, even mm-hmm. the instrumental one. Even, you know, I got something really amazing out of those. I loved them. Um, uh, I don't know if I would say Bowie. I'm a massive Bowie fan because I didn't enjoy... I loved the last record. It, like, changed my life Black in Star? a way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, but there were some moments that weren't as inspiring to me. 
Um, sure. But overall, again, yeah. like Black Sabbath, like overall, yeah. but that's overall, insane, I'm just saying you know. Overall. Yeah. And um, so, and, like, and, I would take his record. I would take. Yeah. It. I would and take. I, think, I would take I, his his batting average. I'd right. take and, that. And, shit. and again, like, I'd take <laughs> like Prince's you know, worst album. Yeah. You know, and yeah, 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 like exactly. most people's best. So <laughs> exactly, I get it. Yeah. Cool. All right. We want to thank you guys so much for coming, and we appreciate your time so much. Uh, Giraffe Tongue Orchestra, the new album, Broken Lines, is in stores September 23. Take a listen to it. Like, another cool thing, though, I think about the supergroup is that it could introduce fans to other bands that they didn't hear of before. Like maybe an Alice in Chains fan has never heard Dillinger, and they might have That's you know true. the same reaction that you did when you heard the Iron Needs and Dead <laughs> Scene EP. I mean, there's got to be some 15. There will be some 15 year old kid who's an Alice in Chains fan who is now going to get turned on to Dillinger. Like, it will happen. That's a good point. Yeah, I think you're right. And that that moment, although terrifying, when I was in high school, was like. It was essential because now I'm a huge Dillinger Escape Plan fan, if you couldn't tell by my questions for Ben Weinman. Uh, you know, so I, I'm glad it happened, although it felt like it kind of broke my brain at the time. Like, if you listen to that song, When Good Dogs Do Bad Things, it's probably the most insane piece of music that's ever been recorded. Uh, or, like, the third most insane piece of music that uh, Mike Patton's been a part of. So, I mean... Yeah, I'm, I'm just a, a huge fan. So hopefully, maybe this band, maybe Alice in Chains, it'll, you know, it'll reach one of those kids. And Yeah, I think it'll re just keep reinforcing other people's projects. And that the term supergroup really comes from a good place at heart. Yeah, I think it does. I think it does. Well, that's the Loudwire podcast, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Follow me on Twitter, at GrahamWire. Joe still does not have a Twitter. He it's not going to happen. He doesn't want your Twitter followers. Nope. I actually looked up Thrones of Blood the other day, because that's oh, what you did, said your did, was it? Twitter was. It wasn't. No? No, it okay. wasn't. So don't follow that guy. I use it for guy. a lot of stuff. No, actually, go ahead and follow him. He could probably use No, follow followers. that guy and start talking to him about how the podcast is great or crap. Whatever. He's going to be confused. I'm going to laugh. All right. We're going to go play some Dukin'. Have a nice day, everybody. Bye.